Conservative infighting feels like it's a lot more rare than infighting on the left. So when it happens in a big way, you've kind of got to enjoy them eating each other, especially when it's over being more progressive. Now, of course, you guys have probably seen how they often use, I guess, gay conservative pundits and conservative pundits from minorities like Candace Owens to say really bad stuff. They get these people to try and vindicate the conservative movement's often bigoted policies against um, the LGBT community or various minorities or try and shift it and say that the other side are actually the bigoted ones, not us. So they're often useful idiots for the right. Now, it seems like trying to expand this even further has massively backfired. So I wanted to talk about these two incidents separately, but I think it's very telling that when conservatives are talking about adult actress Brandy Love, they keep on bringing up Caitlyn Jenner because in their mind, they're sort of part of a similar problem. And as one of them is going to say, it's about degeneracy, which apparently is the key goal of the left. So today we're going to talk about how conservatives are basically fighting each other over whether they should accept adult film actresses and transgender people as part of their movement. But I'm going to plug my social medias and Patreon for about a minute, so skip that stuff if you're not interested. But before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if, you know, you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. For every 5k, we get a new chocolate orange. Help me get to 40k in the near future so we can get a new one. I also live stream usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I apologize for missing the last two Thursdays. This video will probably go out afterwards, but I was on the Humanist Report on Wednesday night, so I couldn't upload this video then, and I'm uploading it on Thursday, meaning I couldn't live stream, but that's when I usually do it. Now let's jump into the Brandy Love scandal first. So basically, there was a big drama that Brandy Love, the adult film actress, was banned at a Turning Point conference for young people and it had like various speakers. Now, I just want to get into Brandy Love's politics quick to show you that this is a very conservative woman. So Brandy Love and her Twitter bio is the MAGA MILF. And now she's also put Trigger Candace Owens and the far left in her bio as well. So when someone asked what is the point of conservatism after this drama, she said to hold fast in the spirit and text of the constitution, the liberty and freedom promised in the constitution, limited federal government, federalism, American exceptionalism, capitalism, Judeo-Christian values, low taxes, individualism, strong military. She also says, despite what they say, I am a Christian as well as a conservative, but I'm not one who believes that my personal faith should drive politics or govern this wonderfully diverse country. Conservatism is policy related, not religion related. The liberty promised in the constitution, limited federal government, federalism, all this other stuff we've heard before. So now let's go into the drama and what happened. And we're going to give her take on what happened. And then we're going to talk about Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk's reaction to this stuff. And also Matt Walsh's reaction to this stuff to show you the conservative civil war. So she tweets when she went all checked in. And she shows a picture of herself in front of one of their banners. And she also tweeted, it's good to be around so many young conservatives gives me hope. And then she says, can't make this up. Just watch Charlie Kirk, Dan Bogino, Dan Bogino, Rick Scott and Kat Timpf speak about freedom, censorship and how inclusive the movement is. And then they had me thrown out of Turning Point USA conference. The Republican Party is broken. So the organizers claims, according to Yahoo News, that the Student Action Summit, which this was, was an event designed for minors and 
The website says it's primarily intended for students between the age of 15 and 26, but they will keep saying minors in their defense of this stuff, despite, you know, it seemingly includes college students. Now, Yahoo News also asked her questions about this. So they said, can you talk me through why you wanted to attend the Turning Point USA event and how the day went before you were rejected. And she says, we were told by the TPUSA conference by a known political consultant who's worked on everything from Republican presidential campaigns to local school board elections. I have a young adult in college and I've seen firsthand what goes on. The TPUSA mission seemed positive and solid. Charlie Kurt reminded me of a young Tucker Carlson or Ben Shapiro, well-spoken, sharp mind, and an unusual ability to not only recall stats and information, but to also pivot on a dime from topic to topic. The speaker list included people I admired, followed, and listened to regularly. My husband and I arrived at the hotel on Saturday. We checked in and went over to the conference center to get registered. We received our lanyards and then walked through the exhibit hall to see what was going on there. Occasionally, someone would come up to us to take a selfie. That's just part of being who I am. These were not kids. They were young adults who ran TP USA chapters at universities, and some were with their fathers and mothers. After spending 40 minutes at the exhibit hall, my husband and I went back to the hotel room to freshen up. Then we went back to the conference for the opening ceremony and speakers. We were seated in the adult VIP section and watched the opening ceremony as well as all the speakers and then went back to the hotel for a drink. They later called it a night and she said, I jumped onto my social media accounts to see what was going on and saw a tweet from someone that said, sorry about what happened at TPUSA. I had no idea what they meant. I kind of discarded it and logged onto my email and that's when I saw the email that they revoked my attendance. After that, there were a series of stories, explanations, and flat out lies as why they cancelled me. So the interview asked her how it made her feel. It was extremely hurtful and disappointing for five minutes, and then I was just pissed off. It's an egregious example of cancel culture. I literally had just sat through four to five speakers, including Kirk himself, rail against big tech and the left their assault on free speech. I cheered them on in agreement, and then they banned me. It's hard to make that up. If TPUSA wants to have the rights to have standards for who can participate with their platform, fine, but they can't then turn around and tell Facebook that they can have standards for who can participate on theirs. So it always takes something like this with conservatives to really understand who's like behind censorship and who doesn't really care about free speech. It's mostly conservatives and they just showed it here. So Candace Owens obviously said a lot of stuff about this, which I'm going to play for you in a bit. And replying to that, Brandy said, I used to believe people like Candace Owens were fabulous. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Not only did she attack me, but Candace said Tommy Lauren should have been kicked out too because she endorsed Caitlyn Jenner. This weekend taught me a lot about people and politics. The Democrats have their fanatics. The Republicans have theirs to deal with such as this ultra-religious ultra faction and white nationalists. You cannot govern a country as wonderfully diverse as the US from the extremes of either side. It always leads to authoritarianism. So that's pretty hilarious, but numerous conservatives and prominent conservatives came to her defense and people just tweeting about it saying, uh, what the F, um, Turning Point kicked out Brandy Love out of their conference. They kicked a literal conservative out. Porn stars are some of the most libertarian conservative people out there because they don't want the government controlling their job let alone their lives, what a mistake. So there's a side that supported her, and there's also a side, like she says, the more religious side, who really, really got very precious about her attendance and tried to smear her saying, why would she want to be there with all these children and stuff, making it seem like it was like for all the family when it was run by people involved in universities. So I want to get to Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk's, and Matt Walsh's reaction. And I just enjoy this a lot because these are terrible people all fighting each other about what this ridiculous ideology means. And to these guys, conservatism is not just about like free market capitalism and everything. It's more to do with the religious side and also the family. There was, I saw this happening on Twitter. It's like, how could they ban Brandy Love? Okay, a lot of other questions should be asked. First and foremost, why isn't, she's not like a former porn star. It's like, I then looked to see who she was, went on Twitter and saw her full frontal private parts. Um, and so that was shocking. And, and nobody asked the question, why did she, log on and decide that she wanted tickets as a VIP um, at a student summit. So first and foremost, it's inappropriate because this is a summit that's for students. And high school kids. And high school kids. And if these parents are giving their children permission to go to this conference, they're expecting that you're not going to have porn stars walking around. You have conservatives that defended this, Ben Dominich, Megan McCain's husband, who runs The Federalist, because I guess she writes The Federalist, and he says this thing which got me so angry. We Conservatives, she's, she's a wonderful conservative. No, she's not a conservative. She might be a libertarian. She might be a Republican. She might be a nationalist. She's not a conservative. The word exactly. conservative, it has meaning. It has meaning. The Big Ten philosophy says that we need to be more like the left. Right. Totally. And you also find this. And in, in fact, I think Turning Point should kick out more people from the conferences. I've been like kind of hitting when I found out that, you know, Tommy Lahren endorsed Bruce Jenner. 
I mean, Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do this, but I'm like, so it, you know, endorse Caitlyn Jenner. And well, this is what same thing. We need to be more big tent. No, when you're talking about positions of power, right? And you're saying that you're endorsing transgenderism, which is one of the biggest threats to the pillar of faith. Let's not forget faith. Okay, came before the Constitution. Faith informed the Constitution. Faith and family. These pillars, these natural pillars, these natural conservative pillars informed the Constitution, not the other way around. Yes. Okay? And these people are now antithetical in calling themselves conservatives. If you do anything that is against the family unit, you are not a conservative. It's not cancel culture. You have a response. These are students. There are some conservatives, many, I think, who think that uh, conservatism should embrace and defend the normalization of hardcore pornography. It's like absurd if you don't. It's ridiculous not to. You're just a prude because the left has shifted the whole culture in its direction so thoroughly and dramatically that conservatives will adopt radically leftist positions while imagining that they're opposing the left in the process. The normalization of sexual degeneracy is a leftist position. It is, in fact, the principal leftist position. It's the main thing that they're trying to do. And the idea that, you know, sexually you should be able to do whatever you want and live however you want. And uh, not only should, should you be able to, but it should be celebrated and accepted by everyone. You cannot fight the left. You can't really stand for anything, least of all freedom or whatever you think you're standing for. If you've abandoned moral truth. We've had self-proclaimed conservatives embracing Caitlyn Jenner. And self-proclaimed conservatives, a lot of them the same ones. Uh, now saying, oh yeah, ha have hardcore porn stars at the, at the conservative events. Let's prove how cool we are. A total abandonment of moral truth and biological truth, of truth of all kinds. Okay, the goal is to, let's defeat the left. Step one, abandon moral truth. Step two, abandon biological truth. And then what, victory? So there you heard those three talk about these things and notice how they can't help themselves but start talking about Caitlyn Jenner, which will be a nice through line in a second. But it's clear with someone like Donald Trump, I guess this split has become more apparent because old Republicans, you used to be like, I'm pro-family. I'm so Christian, I can quote the Bible. Here's the church I've gone to for 50 years, blah, blah, blah. That was old school Republicanism with like Nixon, Ronald Reagan especially. But Donald Trump has had multiple wives. Donald Trump has had multiple affairs. Donald Trump has had multiple allegations against him of harassment and assault from women and stuff. Donald Trump was this super sleazy con man. And when you welcome in someone who is less conventional for your conservative beliefs, you are gonna get more people in your movement who might not be all these Bible thumpers. But it's clear the conservative movement in America is trying to deal with this. Because they've somewhat accepted some gay conservatives like Dave Rubin, they're happy for him to go on Fox News with all these bigoted people and have all these awful conservative people on his show to talk about the left and how really the left are the real bigots and the left hate everyone. But now they are really struggling with this sort of stuff. Now these guys, like they were saying, are conservatives in the mold of the family and marriage and all this stuff, anti-abortion. And they're also saying it should cancel Tommy Lauren for supporting the Republican candidate for the governor in California who happens to be Caitlyn Jenner. Now, of course, they also like to miss gender Caitlyn Jenner a lot, showing what lovely people these guys are. But on that Donald Trump point, it's hilarious how these guys all voted for Donald Trump, ca like campaigned for Donald Trump, talk about how great Donald Trump is. Donald Trump did not have a problem with adult film stars. He even had an affair with one. So it's absolutely hilarious. The president is allowed to have relationships with adult entertainers but one cannot be conservative who comes to one of these conferences. Now, like I said, it's very telling they start bringing up Caitlyn Jenner when they're talking about um, an adult film actress. Because just like how they used to view gay people, they view transgender stuff and everything else as this form of degeneracy. And that's just how they view it. It's, of course, disgusting, but this is like another frontier for them. And they just can't accept how this stuff is being more normalized in society. Now, Caitlyn Jenner is obviously extremely problematic because of how she's thrown trans people under the bus, being one of the most high-profile trans people in the whole world. Now, I'm going to get into the harassment she received at CPAC, but it just really shows you, no matter what you do, 
as a marginalized person often. It will never appease these bigoted conservatives because they just hate you. They will often use you like Candace Owens or Dave Rubin, but they don't actually like you and they don't want you to exist. So Forbes writer Dawn Ennis wrote a good article called Caitlyn Jenner Turned Her Back on Trans Kids to Get Republican Votes. And she talks about when she announced her candidacy and this one issue. So, so Caitlyn Jenner was asked about the sports stuff in schools and um, she tweeted, I didn't expect to get asked this on my Saturday morning coffee run, but I'm clear about where I stand. It's an issue of fairness and we need to protect girls' sports in our school. Jenna tweeted a story by TMZ and the headline said, if you're a biological boy, you shouldn't be in girls' sports. Uh, the article says, misgendering trans girls as biological boys isn't just the fault of the gossip site. In the video, Jenna answers a question about the issue and says, this is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girls' sports in school. It just isn't fair and we have to protect girls' sports in our school. Jenna's comments on Saturday standing stark contrast to the words she said on Outsports podcast for Transporter Room in April 2020 and she says back then I think every trans person if they're into athletics should have the opportunity to compete and to improve themselves I think sports is such a great way to learn a lot about yourself and yeah I want to hopefully they'll have the opportunity in the future to do whatever they can do I'm all for it I'm all for it but that wasn't the only flip-flop Jenna also said when she said politics is something I don't talk about any longer lots of trans people had stuff to say about Caitlin's comments and Trace Lysett said Kate this isn't it when you're on hormones and or blockers, there is no advantage. I ran track at club level with college girls and trust me, there's no advantage. I would have went pro if I was able to run the times I ran before hormones. Uh, Charlotte Clymer said, Caitlyn Jenner is anti-trans. She doesn't understand the science and she's pandering to the ignorance of anti-trans people. I have absolutely no problem saying Caitlyn Jenner supports and directly benefits from transphobia. Now here is a video of Caitlyn Jenner getting harassed at CPAC by one of these more religious conservatives. Bruce. Bruce. I don't want to picture Bruce. Bruce. Bruce, what do you think about the stuff that they're teaching in the schools? There we go. Dropping. One, Hey, Bruce. Bruce. What do you think about the stuff that they're teaching in the schools regarding the LGBTQ? About Jesus Christ, Bruce. Don't forget about Jesus. Kate and Jenna essentially sold out her morals, her views on transports, just to appeal to certain Republicans in California. Now, but this is why it's so sad often when you see people, either if they're transgender, if they're gay, if they're non-binary, if they're often, you know, minorities in countries like America, so African Americans or other different minorities, who basically sell out everything to become conservatives. Now this doesn't really go for Brandy Love, it goes for these people, because you're selling yourself and actively doing harm to the community you come from just for money and just for your brand. And it's disgusting how much misinformation they peddle, or in Caitlyn Jenner's case, actively pursuing a political platform to make the lives worse of trans people. And as a super high profile trans person, she must obviously realize how hard it is for people to both come out and often live in a society that actively hates you in a lot of ways. And they're not even subtle about it, they're vicious and they're open about it. So here's Ben Shapiro reacting to Elliot Page coming out as trans. Okay, now I would be remiss today if I did not discuss one of the great issues of our time. And that is that the actress Ellen Page, who is, was, and shall remain a woman, is now a man. No, it turns out that Ellen Page is now identifying as Elliot Page. And the media, instead of saying, here's a headline with content, Ellen Page announces she identifies as man, wishes to be called Elliot Page. Right, now I would have the whole story. But Elliot Page, Juno star, conveys nothing because Ellen Page was the star of Juno. So I'm like, wait, was her brother in that movie? Like, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. One further note on all of this. If you feel like this is crazy and that this is being crammed down on you, that is because it is. That is because this is not a fringe phenomenon anymore. Right? This is something the Democratic Party fully embraces and pushes. So you're really just never going to convince these people. They are horrible bigots. And that is their political platform. You're not going to change their mind. And while Trump might have brought in some more less religious, non-conventional conservatives, it shows that these guys still will not accept these things. And if you're someone like Brandy Love and you work in the adult film industry, 
then they're not going to accept you because they have this very, very prudish view on sexuality in general. And they also have this, you know, really conservative view about the family unit. You know, this like nuclear family with straight parents and stuff. That's what they fundamentally believe and campaign upon. They're not for freedom, most of these people. And it's funny that they say you can't be a conservative and be transgender. You can't be conservative and be an adult film actress. But this is apparently also the party of freedom and personal responsibility and the government staying out of your business. But not only do they support the government making the lives worse for transgender people, for example, they will also ban these people from their own conferences and try and cancel them all. Again, this crusade against cancel culture by the right has always been totally ridiculous because the only cancelling really is done by people like them. They're the ones who are always trying to suppress your freedom and they're the ones who make America a very exclusive community in their minds of what this is and it's for straight people it's for these nuclear families and it's for christians by and large so caitlin jenner is just a massive sellout so who knows if she'll change her mind she has a load of money she's very privileged brandy love is a different case in that she's talking about being like for diversity in america and everything like that Hopefully, maybe it will wake her up that the conservatives are probably her enemy, not left-wing people who are much more pro-sex work on the whole. You know, I don't enjoy the harassment of Caitlyn Jenner. I do enjoy the civil war in conservative circles about Brandy Love, though, just because a lot of conservatives do seemingly accept Brandy Love, and it really, really annoys these, you know, more prudish religious types. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you want to follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle, on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to join our community's Discord and subreddit, that is in the description. And if you want to support my work, please check out my Patreon. And if you made it this far, thank you all for watching.